Once upon a time, up in Oregon, which is the state above California and isn't as good, there was a little boy, which was me, who had a mommy and a mommy boyfriend. Every Christmas, they both went to this horse racing thing in Atlanta and always left him with a grandma who lived alone and who loved only two things, cleanliness and complete privacy. The little boy was therefore a kind of horrific seven-day test for her nerves, and the little boy decided to bring his pet monkey, even though it was too much. It, it was way over the line. So why did the little boy do it? Uh, such is the mystery of the human condition. The monkey also had to wear a diaper, but also had figured out how to take the diaper off and leave it places mostly in the kitchen, um, where grandma was. Monkey did this about half a dozen times on the first day. And then something happened to grandma. She became like the fading echo when coal mines accidentally collapsed and trapped people in the dark. The little boy began to scream songs from the Lion King as loud as he could, um, especially the one I'm going to be king someday, can't wait. Up and down the hallway, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. King someday, can't wait, can't wait. The king's a king, can't wait. Someday, then he was suddenly locked in the potato cellar, kept in total darkness like the coal miners. The monkey was shoved out into the snowy backyard, locked in a pet taxi. Grandma had her quiet back for the next four days. Mommy eventually came to rescue the little boy, pulling him to get into the car, and sounds of struggle were behind him, and then the sirens came, and he wasn't able to rescue his monkey. He left him there in a backyard as cold and barren as the moon. But the little boy was an optimist, not around the clock, but he had a general faith in monkeys, all the clever things they do with those little fingers, his monkey would figure out the little latch, no problem. He would free himself and be on his way back to the little boy by means of secret, munchy, m secret monkey hitchhiking. I almost said secret munchie for what that's worth. So the little boy waited and waited for hours just waiting for little taps on the window. But Monkey never came home. But yet, he must have gotten out, right? And just be using the pet taxi as a pseudo apartment. Um, he could have lots of apartments by now, if you think it about it, because there's big boxes behind shopping malls, and then even a, a real apartment, like the like Seinfeld apartment, but small for monkeys, monkey-sized. The little boy didn't know if they made those, but much of his inner life was pretty iffy speculation anyway, so why curtail that particular fantasy? A few days before the next Christmas, the little boy's grandma died. And he was dragged back to her house to help dig through the filth for anything worth a damn, as mommy put it. And lo and behold, still there, and the door still shut. The little boy didn't look inside. He couldn't. What was he to believe? That monkey had starved to death like a complete invalid? A monkey isn't a cow or a salamander. It can take steps to survive a situation. But why, then, did he not look inside the pet taxi? Why did he leave it to his imagination forever and ever? He couldn't go back to Grandma's to check it out now. One more whiff of that place and he would never get another erection, even through adulthood, just ever again, never. And then the little boy thought, In for a dime, in for a dollar. He just would never be content.
until he knew. So he purchased a second pet monkey, and then placed this second monkey in a duplicate pet taxi. If this new monkey managed to escape the pet taxi, then he could reasonably conclude that his old monkey had also escaped from the pet taxi. Monkey freedom, monkey be free, like the race cars and the toilet flushes. Monkey. When the little boy returned from his court-ordered mandatory afternoon dose of the Sing No to Drugs cassette, he found the cage had visibly shifted, but was still latched. Oh, monkey. 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 No soft monkey chirps could ever soothe him again. Leave me. His heart was flint to the exotic side of pet ownership forevermore. Leave me and make haste. Or is that the same thing? Just don't let this go too far. I get so bored. I don't even know myself. It's like trying to restrain a stranger. Flee, flee monkey. Flee across the midnight ocean on one of those pool chairs, for example. But uh, I don't, you can't use ours. The little boy showed the monkey his afternoon programming schedule and boasted about how the living room was like a football field of monkey-compatible snacks right then. These Honey Nut Cheerios being a mere sample. Don't stay back in the shadows. Don't tempt me further. Don't unleash all my vicarious fantasies of traveling down the toilet through your body experience. Cold water dragging my body through the tight white porcelain darkness for miles for the love of God. Miles, don't quit like this. Miles, like a frightened prisoner. And I'm assuming tragic wet and pungent. toilet prisoner. I was not. Yeah. We go down sleep the toilet. In the toilet. In the toilet. We. But this. All the little boy needed was to absolve himself of the results of his previous monkey ownership. It no longer had anything to do with this damn new monkey. This monkey was simply at the wrong pet store at the wrong time. He warned him again. There are no cosmic scales of justice. The little boy poured motivational uncomfortableness into the pet taxi, specifically his 99 cent store imitation lock blocks from Mexico that smelled like burnt hair. No longer would the monkey have the option to lounge around in poses of self-pity. And what was left to do in the cage, if not that? Simply looking out through the little notches. What if even that were taken away? Sensory deprivation, other and unforgiving. That is your choice rather than freedom? See, monkey, the outside world is lost forever. You can't see it, and I'm telling you, it isn't here anymore. wanted the monkey to look into his own eyes. Smash! Smash the chains that hold you, monkey. You are not like the other monkeys trapped by their shyness and inability to stop worrying or whatever the hell is wrong with them. Because you win, monkey. You win. Rise with the sun, fresh air, and distant rooster. Plunge, monkey. Plunge. Plunge. Dive deep into the sea of farmer triumphs and tragedies. Alas, all of this the little boy offered, and to no effect. Finally, he gave the monkey instructions how to get itself out. No alphabet letters, no abstracted symbols, just pictures of how to get it done. One, two. He was finished here. Did first monkey starve, not starve? He would not give in to such regretful minutia anymore. His past was too cluttered with that sort of editorial fantasy. He had to start fresh. Dark fresh, dark fresh, dark fresh, dark fresh, dark fresh, dark dark fresh, 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 dark fresh. Successfully concluded the original experiment. 
the little boy realized. This was like how relationships should be between adults. When a past relationship has gone wrong, what you need to do is enter into a second relationship that resembles the first as closely as possible. Then make all the same mistakes really fast, boom, 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 thereby ruining the second relationship, but this time you were in control, watching it up close, understanding it better, seeing how it made things toxic. But to be fair, you still have to leave an exit for the other person, like I did with Monkey, so that they can escape and find happiness with someone else. Um, and in Monkey's case, this turned out to be Kitty, though. So.